on the I'd like to call to order the 13th regular meeting of the Sheboygan Common Council for 2019-2020. Would the clerk please read the quote for the meeting? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If you want something you never had, you have to do something you've never done. Thank you very much. Um, Alder Bourne is excused at this meeting. Could the clerk please call the roll? There are nine present. Very good. Uh, today we have some guests uh, from Sharon Abel's uh, civics class. The LTC students are with us, and I'd like to ask them to please stand in place and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from our last Common Council meeting. Alderperson Wolf. Motion to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, next is resignation. I'll t turn it over to City Attorney Charles Adams. We have one resignation. Uh, Jake Denbor is resigned from the Board of License Examiners effective immediately. Thank you very much. Alder Person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to receive and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. And then we have a, a res. I mean, a, uh, next is item is public forum. City Clerk. Mike Martin. Could you state your name and address for us, please? Mike Martin, 2326 West Shelley Court, Sheboygan. Thank you. You'll have five minutes. Hello, everybody. My name is Mike Martin. I am a sports announcer for WSCS TV here in Sheboygan. Uh, some of you might know us as TV8. That was back in the day. Uh, what the sports arena does uh, from TV8 or WSCS is we announce football, basketball and some baseball games throughout the course of the school year. And uh, that's for the four high schools in town. We also cover some Lakeland and UWS uh, games also. Uh, my question is, this is rhetorical, why does the budget cut WSCS sports when is the most popular service we provide? We have a long history here in Sheboygan of covering sports since 1982 I believe it started with a game they covered in the Armory when North played Kohler. Kohler was led by a player by the name of Joe Wolf, and uh, Sheboygan North wound up winning that game. And from that point forward, Sheboygan has always covered sports. For the last 22 years, the city has run the TV station and we've covered sports. Last year, this was cut from the budget. I haven't done a game yet. I should have about seven football games done. Now, I'm not up here promoting me earning money. That's not it. I do a job that I love. My announcing partner, Chris Wright, is over on the side. I can speak for him. We love doing that job, and we miss it. And I know the kids miss it. We do it for them also. The basketball season is upon us. Football season is pretty much done in terms of a broadcast schedule. Um, I'd like to see what we could get done with that. I know that I came in this afternoon and I do want to thank Carrie Ahrens and Meredith De Bruyne for their help to gather information so I can speak like a semi-knowledgeable person. Uh, I know that the franchise fees are down. I know that the city has drawn $50,000 from a balance fund to try and fund the station. And I appreciate those efforts on your part. 
the station is important. But also keep in mind, when you cut the sports from it, you're cutting the most popular service that we provide. So the people are still paying the taxes, but they're not getting the fun, or pardon me, getting the service that uh, I think they should have. We learned from the city, the station, that if we wanted to cover a game, we had to charge $500 a game. So with that ballpark figure, let me proceed. Uh, we were told that to get the $500, we needed to either have the schools pay for the broadcast or to get sponsors. And uh, I know I speak for more people out here, but I'll say it. If I was a parent of a kid in school and they were going to spend $500 to broadcast a game, I would not be in favor of that. I think that's a misuse of uh, money. I think this is something that we as a community should be able to fund. Also, if we were to have to do that, who is responsible from our station to go out and get funding? We're not experienced in that. You know, we don't know about gathering funds and getting uh, ads on TV in that regard. For the school year, this is when we operate, and I talked to Scott a little before our meeting, is uh, you adjusted your schedule slightly last year because of the change. But normally our sports broadcast schedule runs through the school year. And it usually encompasses about 32 dates or games, which is $16,000 according to the city's fee schedule. The basketball season, like I said, is upon us. That's 18 games, $9,000. Now, work with me here. We are not being funded this year. This was on last year's budget. What I want to do is two things. One, get us back in the budget. That's why I'm here tonight, because you're going to talk about next year's budget. We're off in 2019. Put us back on in 2020, please. It's a service we provide to the community. We provided this service for a long, long time. Let's keep it going. Second point, what do we do about this year? We're out of the budget, aren't we? There's nothing we can do. Budget was passed, we're, good, we're done. What I'm asking you for is funding for the basketball schedule, $9,000. I know money is tight. Carrie told me that you took the $50,000 out of the balance fund to fund us for this coming uh, budget. Mike, your five minutes is up. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, we'll, we'll uh, continue with the presentation tonight. Uh, this is the Livable Communities Action Plan, and Vicki Schneider, our Director of Senior Services, will be making the presentation. Thank you for this opportunity to speak with you tonight about the Livable Communities Action Plan. You should have a copy or received a copy with your agenda this evening. So, um, Meredith, do you have? Okay, thank you. And you can go to the next one. So what makes a community livable? The World Health Organization has established eight domains or eight categories that makes a community a livable community. And so you can see those eight listed uh, on the PowerPoint. What this really is, is like universal design for a community so that people can gather, they can get to the place they want to go to, they live in homes that are affordable, accessible, they can participate in social activities and encourage uh, multi-generational -gener experiences, access to technology, and healthcare so that they can stay healthy in their homes for as long as they are able to, and to, to be able to age in place. So getting started, this is a, we're in the second year of our two-year process as uh, AARP established this initiative in the United States that Daryl Hufland, as city administrator, went to Wendy Schmitz, who was the Senior Activity Center supervisor, and asked her to uh, begin this initiative. And so she did a lot of work. There was a lot of prep work in this, and there was a task force that was established, um, and that is on page one if you want to see all the different participants who were in this program. 
So the last piece of information that Wendy was able to establish was our mission and vision. So which our mission of the Livable Communities Task Force is to promote the positive attributes of the city of Sheboygan through collaboration, advocacy, and engagement. And our vision is that all community stakeholders will be connected to and demonstrate pride in the city of Sheboygan. Um, we know that we have come a long way, but we know that there's a lot more work that we have to do. This is about at the same time that I was uh, that I became an employee of the city about six months ago. And during this transition of Wendy handing it off this task to me, uh, we then established a logo. And this was the work, of, again, of uh, several people on our task force. Mary Matiska, Sarah Schwefel helped with this. John Rost, Nancy Maring, and myself met several times to clarify what, we, what it is that we wanted to have this, this look like. And then we established the action plan. And there are three com components to the action plan that, we, that were critical for us, that we wanted it to be aligned with the city of Sheboygan's strategic plan. We did not want to have something that was going off in a direction that, that didn't match. Uh, it obviously had to have the eight domains addressed in it. And it also had to be in alignment with our mission and vision. So we wanted to make sure that it was a collaboration between all different uh, organizations within the city, that it advocates for those who are in need of services, and that it's invitational. So we submitted this plan in August of 2019. And thankfully, our plan was approved as submitted and we had some very positive feedback as a result of that, that the communities that reviewed our plan uh, were very pleased with the thoroughness and the completeness of, our, of what we submitted. So very pleased to have that done. We are one of three cities in the state of Wisconsin that actually submitted and had a plan accepted. So we are with Greendale and Shorewood uh, as the other two communities. The city of Wausau is entering into this initiative, and also the city of La Crosse joined this year. So we're very pleased with that. Our action plan is currently up on the, on the AARP Livable Communities website. So if you wanted to look at it yourselves, you are able to, to see that. Uh, next slide, please. So why did we pursue this? This is something that as the director of senior services, I just wanted to be able to share with you that the task force wanted to be sure that everyone was included in this livability plan, that it wasn't just for older adults. But as the director of senior services, it's my role to make sure that we are attentive to those who are seniors. So you can see from the 2010 census, I, I got this from the Fact Finder US Census Bureau information. Um, that our senior population is growing in the community, which is not a bad thing. Um, it's great that people live a long and healthy life. If you look at the statistics that uh, 65 and older, we have, uh, as the estimate of 2017, that 7,471 individuals are 65 and older in our community. About two-thirds of those have no disability, 95% uh, of those folks are non-institutionalized. That is not my word, I don't like that word, but that means that they don't live in a facility like a nursing home or assisted living. It means that 95% of those who are 65 and older live in their own homes or an apartment or with family. And so that's an, that's an important thing to note, that most people do not live in nursing homes. Uh, however, about 20% of our older adults live at 150% or below the poverty line. So that's a significant number of people that we need to address uh, through this initiative. And the median age of those who are 65 and older is 74.9. So that's the why. We know that uh, the older people get, the more invisible they become in our society. And it is my role to give those people a voice. Uh, next slide then, please, Meredith. So then how do we get to this? So this is the how. So this is an unfunded program or initiative, but that also gives us the freedom to do what we can with the resources that we do have. And through the advocacy of the Senior Activity Center, I believe that we can then tell our story that we are a vibrant community, that we're a welcoming environment for people who are older, um, and that we have 
the opportunity to develop multi-generational experiences. And the Senior Activity Center's mission is also evolving its mission, its vision, and its values to support the mission and vision of the livable Sheboygan community efforts so that we can be that influence and resource for the community. So thank you. Do you have any questions? Thank you very much for that presentation. See no questions. Appreciate your efforts tonight. Next, we'll go on to mayor's announcements. Today was our park reservation shelter opening day. Uh, if you missed today and you want to have your 2020 event in a city park, reservations are available at the Department of Public Works Municipal Services building on uh, New Jersey Avenue. Uh, today we held a uh, ribbon cutting for the uh, library plaza renovation. Uh, the ribbon cutting ceremony was held today at the newly uh, renovated Mead Public Library Plaza. The project, which began in spring, included repairs to the Lawrence Helper and Design water feature outside the library with improvements to the walkways and seating areas in the surrounding building. The parking lot entrance and book return were also reworked to improve access for patrons using disability parking. In addition, the four brass sculpture panels by a local artist, Sharon Quashis, were refreshed framed and relocated to the A Street side of the plaza. Curbside leaf uh, collection will begin next Monday, October 14th. From Monday, October 14th through Friday, November 22nd, city residents are allowed to rake their leaves into piles uh, into the street uh, for easier and faster pickup by crews. But you have to make sure that you uh, leave the gutter open so that if we do get rain, that can, uh, can get through to the sewers. Public uh, Works Department has divided the city into five sections for leaf collection, one zone for each day of the week, and DPW crews will concentrate their efforts within the assigned zone on each of the appropriate days. There's an Emerald Ash Borer Landowner Workshop on October 9th at 5 o'clock at Maywood. This is a free session, and the workshop um, will help to inform um, uh, you about regarding EAB emerald ash borer identification, uh, physical, financial, and ecological impacts of the infected ash trees on private property, and what options are available to homeowners in response. The Sheboygan Metropolitan Planning uh, Transportation Improvement po uh, Program um, is being revised, and a draft of that is available for a public hearing on October 16th. The public hearing will be held at the Mead Public Library from 4 to 5 o'clock in the Roca Room, and um, all interested persons are invited to comment on the draft document at the public hearing. Sheboygan has scheduled Drug Take Back Day for October 26th. Um, our location in Sheboygan will be St. Nicholas Hospital on Superior Avenue, and the drug take-back activity will be open from 10 o'clock till 1 o'clock. And then uh, the Friends of Mead Library are having our, their book sale on August 24th through 26th. The sale will be held again in the Roca Room in the library's first floor and feature a range of fiction, nonfiction, children's books, collectibles, rare books, coffee table books, cookbooks, crafts, uh, CDs, DVDs, art books, and more. The sale hours are uh, from 9 o'clock to 8 o'clock on Thursday, 9 to 5 on Friday, and 9 to 3 on Saturday. And uh, we want to wish everybody a happy Halloween at the end of the month and uh, plan ahead for uh, uh, trick-or-treating hours. We'll be on Halloween October 31st from 4 to 7 p.m. Uh, next, we'll go on with uh, hearings. Um, the first hearing is item 2.1, number two of hearing number two of 1920, pursuant to chapter 65-90 of the laws of Wisconsin. Notice is given that the annual budget hearing will be held this evening, and any taxpayer or resident of the governmental unit will have the opportunity to be heard on the proposed 2020 budget. Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Yes, please uh, step up, uh, give us your name and address. Hi, uh, my name is Crossley. I live at 2630 North 9th Street in Sheboygan. I'm the secretary for the Sheboygan Pops Concert Band. 
And um, I just heard this morning about this budget meeting going on and this hearing, and I'm, I'm the new secretary, so I'm not very familiar with the process, but I tried to review the budget online and I didn't see any funding for the band. And so I guess I'm here to ask, I know the funding for last year, the city funding for the band was reduced, and I'm here to ask if there's any funding in your budget for the band this year. We are the city band. We give free concerts in Fountain Park. In the summer, we give six free concerts. We have free winter and spring concerts. We perform at the city's Memorial Day program, and we, we perform in the 4th of July parade. Um, our budget is, is fairly small. In 2018, the city gave us uh, $7,400. In 2019, that was cut to $4,400. Um, and so I guess I'm here to find out if there's funding in the budget for the band or, or what is happening. I think we are a, an asset to the community. We give these free outdoor concerts in the summer and we perform, as I said, in the 4th of July parade and the Memorial Day program. And so I guess I would like to encourage the city to continue funding the band. Um, I, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> Thank you very much for being here tonight and Thank appreciate you. your comments. Okay. Is there anyone else wishing to be heard? Is there anyone else wishing to be heard? Is there anyone else wishing to be heard? Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to, to uh, close the hearing. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Um, <laughs> item 3.1 is, um, is our consent agenda. That'll include items 3.2 through 3.10. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to receive and file all ROs, receive all our C's, and adopt all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on any of those items that are on the consent agenda? <coughs> Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Nine eyes. Motion passes. Under communications, uh, items 4.1 through 4.3 will be referred to the City Plan Commission. Under reports of officers, 5.1 is RO number 83 of 1920 by the Senior Services Commission, to whom is referred RO number 79 of 1920 by the Director of the Senior Services submitting the final Livable Communities Action Plan, City of Sheboygan, Wisconsin, dated 2019 of August of 2019, and recommends receiving the RO and the Livable Communities Action Plan. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion <coughs> to receive the RO and Livable Communities Action Plan. Second. Thank you for that motion in support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. <laughs> Item 5.2 and 5.3 will be referred uh, to the Finance and Personnel Committee. Under resolutions, item 6.1 through 6.7 will be referred to various committees. Under reports of committees, 7.1 is RC number 145 of 1920 by the Finance and Personnel Committee. To whom was referred resolution number 89 of 1920 by other persons Wolf and Sorensen imposing a residential recycling fee for services provided by the city and recommends adopting the resolution. Alder person Donahue. Uh, with respect to both 7.1 and 7.2, which 
are identical resolutions, uh, but for the committee they came from. I move that uh, we accept uh, the report of both committees and adopt the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Those items are before us for discussion. See no discussion. Will the clerk please call the roll? Nine eyes. Motion passes. Item 7.3 is RC number 147 of 1920 by the Public Works Committee. Two was referred resolution number 90 of 1920 by Alder Persons Wolf and Sorensen, authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a recycling partnership grant agreement with the Recycling Partnership Inc. and recommends adopting the resolution. Alder Person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to receive the RC and adopt the resolution. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Nine eyes. Motion passes. Item 7.4 is RC number 148 of 1920 by the Finance and Personnel Committee. To whom is referred direct referral resolution number 93 of 1920 by Alder Persons Donahue and Bourne, authorizing adjustments in the 2020 budget, uh, which was requested and recommends adopting the resolution. Alder Person Donahue. Uh, I move that we uh, Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Alder Person Donahue. Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, I would just note that this particular resolution refers to um, uh, adjustments in uh, TID uh, earnings through uh, the year uh, that should be reflected in the 2020 budget. It also reflects the, um, the uh, uh, loss of uh, shared <coughs> revenue on the basis of the of uh, closure of one part of the Edgewater, uh, 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 the Edgewater um, generating power plant. Thank you, Todd. Uh, and so, in that respect, uh, these seem to be um, uh, reasonable adjustments to the 2020 budget. Thank you for the, those comments. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Nine eyes. Motion passes. Item 7.5 is RC number 149 of 1920 by the Public Works Committee. To whom was referred General Ordinance number 19 of 1920 by Alder Persons Wolf and Sorensen, repealing and recreating Chapter 102 of the Sheboygan Municipal Code relating to solid waste and recycling and amending Section 1 14 sub A2 regarding the issuance of citations and rec amends adopting the ordinance with the addition of a sentence to section 102-45A that provides the Department of Public Works issued container shall be removed from the location designated for pickup in subsection B prior to 6 o'clock p.m. on the scheduled collection date. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to receive the RC and adopt the substitute ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Uh, Alderperson Donahue. Um, I did, uh, this is a very long uh, revision to a very long ordinance um, and has a lot of moving parts to it. <clears throat> and I was wondering, I don't mean to put Director Beeble on the spot, but you know, why not? Um, and uh, would you just briefly explain how we're going to communicate um, all of these various changes to our, to our uh, residents, please? Yes, I'd be happy to. It, ba basically, this, this ordinance puts us in alignment with the model ordinance that the Department of Natural Resources that uh, manages and, and sets the guidelines and regulations for recycling throughout the state. 
they provide a model ordinance. So we, we're matching that now. But yes, a lot of this does affect what I would say is the, going to be our what we have for our new cart-based collection. So we will be doing direct flyers to every resident. We'll have a, a web page dedicated to the new rollout of this program. Uh, so there'll be several methods as well as videos that we're going to be produ uh, producing as well as at the Common Council meetings coming in the future. When we get closer to the rollout, we'll do a, 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 a large presentation on this material as well. So there's gonna be a variety of, I guess, methods and means to communicate this as well as multiple opportunities as well. It's gonna be a sustained program starting already in the month of November with some of our earliest information to, to go out to the residents. Thank you for those comments. Is there any other discussion or questions? Seeing none, I'm sorry, Barb Feldy. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just have one question. It says issuance of citation. Um, is there a warning system built into this? I mean, that's going to be probably the biggest concern is um, for those that don't get the information some way or another that um, at least they'll be warned before they're cited. Yes, and, we, and that's how we cur currently operate as of today. This just formalizes it in the ordinance. What we do is we typically do a, a leaflet drop off if something was processed wrong or put in the wrong, wrong bin or, or garbage co uh, container as we speak. And if that um, continues, then we do a personal visit. We'll stop and we'll, we'll actually work with them, explain what we need to do and what, how, how to comply. And obviously after, uh, multiple attempts if there's still non-compliance then we would probably go into the, the the citation thank you very much any other discussion or questions seeing none will the clerk please call the roll Nine eyes. Motion passes. Under general ordinances, item uh, 3.1, general ordinance number 20 of 1920 by Alder Persons Donna Hewen Wolf, amending section 82 33 of the Sheboygan Municipal Code, is to modify the City Hall Department's table of organization. Alder Person Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. Um, as an initial matter, I would move to uh, suspend the rules. Is, is there any objection to suspension? Seeing no ob objection, please proceed. I move that the uh, ordinance be passed. <clears throat> Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, first of all, I'd like to turn it over to Administrator Hoffland to explain a little bit more about this situation. Uh, thank you, Mayor Vandersteen. Uh, at a meeting held earlier tonight, a uh, special meeting of the Finance and Personnel Committee, for discussion purposes, for discussion purposes only, uh, this topic was uh, discussed, uh, and ha additional handouts uh, were received by those committee members. Um, the timing of this issue before you tonight, um, as as uh, older person Donahue identified, uh, is requiring a suspension and possible consideration, um, as this is appearing before you for the first time. Uh, the sense of urgency on this is uh, as a result of a resignation of a staff member who is currently in a senior accountant position. Uh, this person has been with the city for approximately four to five months. Uh, during that time, uh, um, she has become a, a valuable part of our staff. Uh, and as a result, uh, our concern is that uh, an action plan that was recently presented to the Finance and Personnel Committee uh, and was received uh, with 
uh, significant concern uh, that even the uh, identified three to five year timeline to uh, resolve uh, some of the issues uh, may not be timely uh, enough and that possibly the city staff should consider even a one to three year timeline. Uh, this uh, senior account position we feel uh, is, uh, and this person who's currently filling that role would be uh, critical uh, as the city moves forward, especially if the timeline uh, expectations by the Common Council are more aggressive in nature. Um, and as a result, uh, the timeliness for consideration of uh, modifying the position, upgrading the position to be a deputy finance director uh, is before you tonight. Uh, the uh, job description or position description was again uh, distributed at the meeting um, held by the Special Finance and Personnel Committee. Uh, as part of that uh, job description, there is a uh, an identification of a higher pay grade assignment. Uh, the, uh, the ease of, of describing this uh, change is basically to identify what the market value or control point for both positions are, and it's approximately sixteen to seventeen thousand dollars. <coughs> um, so, to, and again, I, I uh, identify that to give you a sense as far as the assigned value, not only for internal comparison purposes of similar job duties level of responsibility, but also external. Uh, comparables in checking with other municipalities for a similar type job. Uh, these this dollar amount should not be uh, uh, should not be used for purposes of identifying what specifically the city would offer uh, this internal candidate as the city considers uh, a strategy to retain this uh, staff member, but an indication as to the value of the position being senior uh, accountant versus the uh, deputy finance director. Um, the main difference in duties between the two positions uh, are supervis <coughs> supervisory in nature. Uh, currently, uh, the director of finance is responsible for uh, leading or supervising uh, all staff members within the department. Uh, in light of the importance of that position, the director of finance, uh, in order for that position to be uh, effective as possible, uh, it is my I am supportive of creating this new deputy finance director position to allow uh, some delegation of duties, both in leading projects as well as uh, overseeing staff, um, to free up the director uh, in in order for him to accomplish uh, other tasks uh, that are more important in nature. Um, also at tonight's Special Finance and Personnel Committee, uh, a representative of CLA uh, who is currently conducting an operational assessment of the finance department, uh, as well as uh, a sort of a side uh, review of the uh, human resource department. Uh, the representative from CLA did identify their support for the creation of, of this position. Um, the Outcome of their full study will not be known until probably uh, mid-November uh, due to, again, the pending resignation of the, or the resignation and potential strategy to retain the staff member. Uh, it is, I'm of the opinion that the city uh, does not have, cannot afford to wait uh, for the results of that study in November, nor even afford to wait uh, for two weeks or three weeks for further consideration by this, by this body. Um, I guess with that, uh, uh, if uh, either Director of HR, Human Resources, or the Director of Finance has additional comments uh, to supplement uh, my comments, uh, Mr. Chair, if you would be open to that. Certainly. Um, Human Resources <laughs> Director Sandy Burrick. Good evening. One of the questions I had is, what is the potential cost for this? Our salary grades have a control point, which is what's considered the 75th percentile of the market average. 
And that is a person who comes in with a decent amount of experience and is ready to start the position with limited training. The control point of the current position of a senior accountant is 66518 and the control point of a salary grade S, which would be this new position, is 83449 So the difference is 16931 between the two control points. Thank you. Finance Director Marty Halverson. Thank you, Mayor. <coughs> so approximately two and a half weeks ago, we did present to the Finance and Personnel <coughs> Committee uh, an action plan to address uh, what I would consider critical or urgent needs to resolve uh, some of the struggles that we've seen uh, over the past year. And some of those are structural in nature. Um, I find the policies, procedures, and um, overall efficiency and operations of the department uh, at times not where they need to be. Uh, one of the key areas of accomplishing that growth is having the proper staff to uh, be present and able to uh, adjust to the needs. Um, the city of Sheboygan uh, is certainly looking at lots of exciting development over the next several years and in order for myself and my staff to be able to properly support uh, the city's growing uh, and economic needs. This position as of deputy finance director, uh, I find as a critical need for, this, for the staff and the department as a whole. Uh, the ability to not only as, as uh, Administrator Hoffland <coughs> said uh, to supervise the operations of the department, but uh, this the current individual and or uh, an individual who would fill that role would be primarily tasked with some of the things that don't necessarily come with a senior accountant title, and that is truly developing uh, policies and procedures that can lead the department uh, well into the future. So overall, this, this position is something that uh, I, I would certainly uh, look to the council to support uh, in, in nature of not only the timing of it with a uh, current tendered resignation, but also as we head into the uh, as we're into the fourth quarter and head into the year end, these are critical tasks that need to be accomplished before we close out our fiscal year. Um, these are things that uh, we certainly have on a long term plan that was presented, and, and as Administrator Hofflin said, uh, it was asked to try to accelerate that. And retaining staff is is one way to uh, support that advancement of, of urgency to, to uh, fueling the, the energy and, and knowledge that's in the department to be able to sustain a, a shorter term uh, time frame. Thank you. Administrator Hoffland. Uh, one item that I did not one item that I did not address uh, was the, the context for the position that's before you uh, for consideration this evening. Uh, this position uh, the current position of the senior accountant was created and filled earlier this year. Um, as I mentioned earlier in my comments, uh, in light of the uh, responsibilities of the director of finance and the goals as uh, being established by the finance and committee, finance and personnel committee relating to an action plan, um, what's before you is really an elevation of that senior account position to a deputy finance director position. Uh, this deputy finance director position actually was in our table of organization uh, as, as short as two years ago. Uh, a employee within that position uh, left our employment um, and ultimately the decision was to temporarily, or, or decision was not to uh, have that position. Uh, so this position again is not new to the city of Sheboygan uh, we, we uh, as a result of having the senior account position uh, it has become clear to uh, uh, city management that it is not of a level or a caliber uh, that is going to be uh, is not of a caliber that is going to allow us to be successful in timely uh, handling uh, and implementing the the action plan, as a result, uh, 
what, what we are here tonight uh, to ask of you is to consider recreating that deputy finance director position, uh, authorizing uh, the change of our ordinance, and ultimately for this city staff to be able to uh, initiate recruitment. Uh, if in fact the existing senior accountant uh, does not uh, does not uh, accept uh, the duties as identified in this deputy finance director position. Thank you. Uh, now we'll move on to Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, and I appreciate the department heads for giving a summary. You guys uh, shaved off a few questions from me. Um, uh, I know that this was just uh, uh, kind of reviewed by the Finance and Personnel Committee right before the meeting. I know it was for discussion only, um, but was there a general sense from the committee members of a recommendation at all? Um, I, I don't know who, maybe that's for Chairwoman Donahue to answer. Um, so that, that would be one of my first questions. And then um, there, and I know that we, we mentioned that CAL was doing a review or a study of the finance department. W were there any concerns that they might have that, that we might be doing this a little too early, adding additional responsibilities to the job description in itself? Um, and then if there was any input from uh, other members of the finance department and how this would supplement or, or assist other um, staff members in that department and how that would help them with productivity. Um, so whoever wants to answer those questions, feel free to take them. Well, Todd Wolf is next. Todd. Thank you, Mayor. I guess I can touch on a few since I'm uh, a committee member of the finance and personnel. Um, and then Chair uh, Donahue can always jump in and correct me if I'm wrong. A um, couple of things I want to first point out is this is really a two part. Really, we've had this position in the past, and we've had these responsibilities in the past. Um, during a hiring and, and changing of the guard, if you want to call it that, the position was kind of put into a dormant position. So really what, in my opinion, what I see happening is that we're asking to reinstate the title and the uh, responsibilities that go accordingly, and obviously the, the wage that goes with it, and the sense of urgency, which is part two, is why we're asking to suspend it is basically because we have a, value, a valued employee um, that we don't want to lose. And we all know how hard it is to find valuable employees, and we also know how hard it is, um, especially in today's marketplace, to be competitive. So when, when I look at this, the two parts, uh, really the sense of urgency is something that I think any department should be looking at at any time. Um, as we continue to grow and change. Um, <clears throat> finance and HR are two of the key areas that keep the, you know, keep the bus running, if you want to <clears throat> call it that. The wheels on the bus keep going. Um, we need a good engine. We need, we're not adding people. We're kind of arranging their responsibilities and their accountabilities. And this is something that CLA supported, and I support it. And we know that there's a lot of uh, opportunity for improvement within that department, and I look forward to seeing what we're going to find in, in, uh, as HR is being reviewed. Um, so I hope that answers your question. We did have some discussion about it in open talk um, with limited time, and I'd say the, the overall um, opinion was positive. There was uh, some concern that we were moving too fast on this change of position. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Donahue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, and I, I would uh, echo what uh, Alder Wolf has said. Um, I'm certainly in, in favor of this, and I'm in favor of moving um, forward quite quickly. Uh, you know, when uh, large and complex departments have a transition in leadership. Um, some transitions go very smoothly and some don't. And I think it's fair to say in all honesty that this transition has been bumpier. We knew that there would be a lot of challenges with a new person coming in after all of the years that, that um, our former um, uh, finance director devoted to the city. Um, but the, um, the challenges uh, appear to be really quite significant. Secondly, we're moving into a more, I want to say modern era, but the, um, 
the responsibilities, the accountabilities of a finance department, any municipal department these days uh, have grown. And when those responsibilities grow, so does the complexity. I am persuaded on this because we had this position for, um, uh, for a number of years, and we tried it without uh, that position. And it really, frankly, just hasn't worked very well. And I think that we need to start taking some really concrete steps to move forward um, as fast as we can. If a current employee stays fine, I don't care about that as much as the fact that we do need to just structurally make this change and, and move forward. So I, need, I know, it sound, you know it seems a little, little quick, a little precipitous, but I think um, overall that this is going to be with a very minor adjustment for, um, uh, for, for the cost is really going to move us forward as quickly as we can. Frankly, this really just has to happen as far as I'm concerned. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Feldy. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I did attend the meeting, and um, Alderperson Sorensen, um, you asked about input. And um, other than Marty, the staff was not allowed to or were told that we didn't have time constraint. They couldn't talk. So we didn't have enough input from the staff in that department. At least personally, I don't feel that I had enough input. And um, one of my concerns is, um, and I voiced it at the, at the meeting, is constituents. Um, because um, this is a four-month employee that is that that they're going to re-offer the position to with more money. Um, that's hard to justify to the voters um, when some people do not make a lot of money. Um, they're working two and three jobs um, trying to make ends meet. So um, it may seem like a small amount amount to some of us. But to other people, that's a huge amount. Um, and uh, I did ask about longevity in that department. And there are some people that have been there for quite a while. Um, it's complicated. You had to attend the meeting to, to hear all the conversation. But I, and I know there's time restraint, but I still cannot support. Um, I cannot support offering more money to the person that's leaving the position. Thank you for those comments. Alder Person Donahue. Uh, just to follow up, and I really appreciate what Alder Feldy had to say. Just to make it clear, we did have significant staff input. Our district, um, excuse me, our, our city administrator, uh, the uh, head of our um, human resources department who has drafted the new job description, went through it and explained it to us, also explained um, that the, the potential financial impact, um, and uh, and also, of course, our, our director of, uh, of of the finance department, um, on the basis that all three of these uh, department heads um, feel that this is quite a critical matter, uh, I am comfortable proceeding. I do know that um, the the money is an issue. Um, when we have highly educated and highly trained staff, we do pay them more. Uh, and I think that is, frankly, the way, the, the way that probably is always going to be. Um, my concern is that if we don't take this step, what will it in fact cost the city if we find that there are uh, continuing problems with um, reconciliation of records, um, uh, lack of uh, information sharing and, and teamwork development, um, cross-training, which has not happened to, to, as far as I am concerned. Um, uh, so I think, uh, while I, I certainly understand those concerns, um, I, I think we need to take a big picture view of this. And I think that the financial health of the city um, is really, while it's not at risk, it may be if we don't take some steps to really ensure that we work as efficiently and as competently and as quickly as possible. So um, rather than stretch this out and debate this for months um, and then take some months to find a, a new employee to fill the position if we were to, if we were to authorize it, I, th I know it seems fast, but I think that this is the way that we need to proceed. Um, and I will expect reports from our finance director if we do do this and we 
move on a pace as to how it's going. And also from our, our city administrator, because I think this is the critical stuff. I mean, if finance doesn't work, nothing works. And we just need to kind of keep that in mind. Thank you for those comments. Um, Finance Director Halverson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I believe certainly I'm giving feedback to Alder touches on all of uh, the Alder's comments. I certainly appreciate all the feedback, both positive and, and with concerns. Uh, certainly that's the only way we make proper decisions and I certainly uh, take that to heart. Um, I certainly look at this position as much as the urgency could be viewed as are we trying to use it to retain a position or a person in a certain position. Uh, it, I think it goes deeper than that and it, it certainly is something that I have to look at from a timing standpoint. If we look at what it would take to change the senior accountant position into a deputy director through uh, CLA's operational assessment, which uh, we believe it'll come roughly the middle of November. If we wait till after that to take action to create a new position and go through all the multiple meetings and, and discussions, um, through all of that time period, we would be operating down one senior staff, and that could be very detrimental to a department that's going through transition especially at a year end where audit findings were uh, one of the items on our action plan that we're trying to address. Those action plan items and, and findings by the audit last year are truly just symptomatic of a lot of the things that we've addressed and, and have as a concern. So I think whether we truly do retain the staff or not, there's urgency to getting this job posted so that we can fill it with someone who has the caliber who will come in and continue with the uh, progress we have made through the action plan. Uh, so hopefully Alder Sorensen, I hope that those answer your question. Thank you very much. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Eight eyes, one no. Motion passes. Item 8.2 will be referred to the uh, Finance and Personnel Committee. And under other matters, I'll turn it over to City Attorney Charles Adams. Item 9.1 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2019, June 30, 2020, and June 30, 2021. That'll be referred to the uh, uh, licensing hearings and public safety committee. Next, we have a contemplated closed session. Uh, Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to convene in closed session under the exemption provided in section 19.8 sub 1 sub e Wisconsin stats where, to, where competitive and bargaining reasons require a closed session related to the po to a possible development incentive for the project known as Oscar the project on the Vandervart property. On the Vandervart Second. Property. Thank, you Thank you for that motion and support. Will the clerk please call the, session. Session. Please call the roll for closed session? Where competitive and bargaining reasons require a closed session related to the po Nine to eyes. possible development. Motion passes. For, uh, for our viewers at home, this will end our transmission for this evening. Uh, council will be adjourning in closed session. And uh, thank you for your time tonight. And if anybody wants to stay here, we will have a committee of the whole meeting following this. Uh, the council will be adjourning to a room on the side here. And you're welcome to stay here in the council chambers uh, until that other meeting is convened. We'll take a three-minute recess and reconvene.